Well, hello, and welcome to this episode of Stream Stealers. I'm Mark Pikert, Editor-in-Chief of Playbill, and today's special guest is Tony winner Lena Hall. You probably know her from Cats, Dracula, Kinky Boots, Hedwig and the Angry Inch, and she's currently on TNT's Snowpiercer, the new TV adaptation of the movie, uh, starring David Diggs and Jennifer Connelly. So let's bring Lena Hall on. Hi. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Oh, you know, just hanging in there. Uh, obsessed with Snowpiercer, by the way. Did you, did you watch the first episode? I, yes, I did. Were you wondering where I was? <laughs> I Briefly, but then I thought, you know what? I love a star entrance. Honey, I get one. I am so excited. I cannot wait. I will not spoil it, though. And let's not say what, I know what episode you pop in on, but let's not say it so that everyone just tunes in. Right. Or you can just read my Twitter feed. I <laughs> <laughs> it. So, where are you? I'm waiting for you. I'm like, I'm coming. Just not right. now. <laughs> God, everyone's so impatient for Lena Hall. Good. That's As they should be. As they should way. be. <laughs> Uh, so I was already excited about the series and was intrigued that they were going to turn this amazing movie into a serialized drama. Mm -hmm. And then there's an amazing twist that I will not give away, but there's an amazing twist at the end of episode one where you realize, oh, I see why Jennifer Connelly signed on to do this series. She's awesome. She is freaking awesome. Like... I'm that cast, like you, David, is so good. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they had, they got, I mean, the cast is amazing and um, I love the concept. I don't know if you've ever read graphic novels or have read these graphic novels, but these graphic novels are definitely worth a read. They're, it's really good, very dark, very, um, it gives you more of an idea of where the show can go, which is kind of nice. Cause then you can kind of yeah. be like, Oh, I wonder if they're going to do this or that, or, you know, so they pulled a lot from the novels. Um, they, I think the original concept was because of the film's success and they were going off of that. But then at the end of the day, that, the way Bond's film was, was very much, you know, from the back to the front of the train. It was one journey you were following. And this way you're kind of getting to know everyone on the train, all the classes, yeah. how different people are, what people do to survive and, um, and kind of the class, class wars, the politics, the, you know, the, it's a lot more uh, of character you know, it's a character, you know, character drama, but, um, but I think the fun part is discovering all the different parts of the train oh, and yeah. uh, discovering all the different people who are on the train and um, basically the last humanity and who's there to run it. It's like, wow. And, uh, <laughs> and what a time for the series to premiere too. Pretty much. I mean, it's been so long in the making and had many false starts and, you know, all kinds of things that were roadblocks. And I mean, apparently TV shows don't usually follow this kind of bizarre <laughs> timeline. Uh, I was just excited because I auditioned and I was like, oh my God, it's my first series regular. I wanted to go into TV. It's always been, TV film has always been like something I've always wanted to do ever since I was 11 years old. Um, because, and this was really the reason why I wanted to get into TV film. It was because um, I wanted to get famous enough so I could date Jonathan Brandis, who was like my biggest crush uh, when I was a kid. Unfortunately, he's gone now, but um, like, but I married a Jonathan anyway, and he's like super hot. Yeah, so, yeah. so I got my Jonathan Brandis, even though a different last name, still really. Very much on that, and not an actor, which is great. Um, no offense to you actors, but it's tough to be in your business. Just saying, <laughs> it's a little too insulary. <laughs> I need to talk about something else when I come home, and it's really nice to hear about real estate. 
Of course it is. I mean, I got into this hoping that uh, I would fall in love with Devin Sawa in Casper. <laughs> <laughs> a ghost. Exactly. exactly. I reached out to, I have this whole letter that I wrote to Gersh when I was like 12 years old. Um, I typed it out. I spelt Gersh wrong. I like was like, hi, my name is Selena and I'm very talented. And you would really want to put your... Um, You'd want to like develop me because I have what it takes to be a star actress. I can't believe they didn't call me either because if I got a letter from like a toy, maybe they didn't, maybe they thought I was an adult, but I don't know. The way it reads, it does not read like an adult. It definitely reads like a kid is writing this. And um, like, I was just like, and please tell Jonathan Brandis I'm a huge fan. <laughs> and, like that's why I want to be a big actor and like that's why I want to be a star and hey you know what that's fine yeah I mean you were in it for selfless reasons you wanted to make Jonathan's life better by being in it exactly exactly and that's the kind of person I would want to represent <laughs> were I to work at Gersh Agency yeah come on I want to date, date your client at 12 years old. You know, well, sure. He was age appropriate. He was age appropriate. He was a little older than me, but he was age appropriate. Yeah. 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 But uh, um, Something sad yeah. about an old dream. I know. And, I, you know, I own, I own Ladybugs on DVD and I own Sidekicks on DVD. Yeah. I don't know if you remember Sidekicks. Do you remember Sidekicks? Chuck, Chuck Norris, Norris, yeah. Yo, so like my favorite movie of all time, still my favorite movie of all time is Sidekick. I had to spend, when I bought the DVD, this is like way over a decade ago, but just like a decade ago, um, <laughs> I was like, I need this movie. I want to see it. It's nowhere to be found. I had to go on eBay. I spent a hundred dollars for that DVD and it's starting to crack. I'm so upset. And then also the Ladybugs one was eighty dollars because it's out of print, doesn't exist anywhere, right? So, um, so yeah, so I spent a shit ton of money on those. And then mm -hmm. also Sequest DSV. Do you remember Sequest DSV? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. It was like Star Trek, but um, underwater, just like, or you know, just Snowpiercer is like it's almost like a because you can't get off the ship. So you can't get off the train. So and you can't get off of off of Sequest. So you kind of like, you know, it's like one of those. Um, anyway, so um, so yeah, so Sequest DSV, I went searching because I was on a kick again, because I yeah. I was like maybe 26 or something like that. And I was like, no, I was 25. I was 20, no, I was 26. So it was 20, <laughs> and a friend of mine who knew Jonathan Brandis and I was like, Oh, what happened to Jonathan Brandis? I was like looking for him and I found out what happened. It was so tragic. Got really sad. So then I found ladybugs. I found that found those DVDs and then I found the sequest DSV box set. I have that, you know, watch that shit all the time, man. It is so, it's awesome. It's you know, and, and now you're paying homage with Snowpiercer. I am. I am. It all comes back to Jonathan. It does, and it makes me sad because I feel like if he just held on a little longer, you know, he would have a comeback. And I thought you were going to say he would have met you, and everything would have been fine. Right. <laughs> he would have met me, and everything would have. No, I mean, like he probably would have had a comeback. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. for a comeback. So it it's sad, uh, but man, like I'm glad mental health is more into the forefront, and also like how child actors are handled oh, yeah. also coming more into the forefront because he was definitely like kind of, he was definitely a victim of, of, of the business and um, of his own mental health issues, feeling not good enough or like he had couldn't like yeah be the star he wanted to be, you know, I mean, it's a tough business. It's a tough ass business. We all go on waves up and down and I mean even even Snowpiercer there was a period where it wasn't we weren't sure if it was going to happen or where it was going to happen and I right. when did you audition was it like 2016 
2017. In 2017, uh, we filmed, filmed the original pilot in 2017. <laughs> and then I was supposed to do, be in the share show. Like, so all this stuff and obsessed. So obsessed was going to air, was going to happen, right? Well, it was already happening, but obsessed was supposed to drop the same time as I was doing the share show at the same time as my movie came out Bex in the beginning of the year at the same time in the same year. And then Snowpiercer would have aired at the end of that year. So it would have been this huge moment of like Broadway TV film and also like music all yeah. at once in 2018. And then I, cu I couldn't do the share show because they were like, Oh, we're going to film. And then they just like kept pushing back. And then it filmed at the same time as share show. And then of course it didn't air. Then the only thing that came out was my movie, which is amazing, but it didn't get a lot of. And then the obsessed series, like, Oh no, I lost you. Then the obsessed series petered out a little bit. Oh, then it was just kind of like, Oh, okay. You know, like it just became this thing. So Oh, I keep freezing. The coulda shoulda woulda, but everything happens on on for for a reason. You keep skipping. Am I skipping? I mean, uh you keep freezing. I'm sorry. I, I think that I'm having some technological issues, as we all do now. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I want to ask. So no one here, it doesn't matter. No one's here to look at me or to hear me. But I want to ask because I'm obsessed with the people who have done cats in their career. Because everyone has done cats in their career, and my favorite example is Victoria Clark toured the country in cats. Kids did cats. not know how to dance. Figured yeah. it out like after she got the job. <laughs> Uh, she would literally rehearse the routines in the laundry room of her rental in Chicago while she was rehearsing during uh, after rehearsals during the day. Amazing. Uh, but what you made your Broadway debut in Cats in what 1999? I did. Yeah, yeah. May of 99. I was that was my first Broadway show. I moved to New York for it. I had done. I was on tour with it first, and. Right. I had auditioned for that when I was 17 and then they hired me right at my 18th birthday and I'm a January baby. So basically the beginning of the, the year in uh, 1998 and I went out on the tour and I became an adult on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> that was my college. I went to the college wow. past, and I got a great education. Um, and I saw the country, which was really interesting. There were some interesting places that we went because it wasn't like, one of those tours that does like week or, or two week or month long sit downs. It was the end of the tour essentially. Um, and we would do uh, a week in a place was like heaven sent. We yeah. would do, you know, uh, doubles, uh, double split weeks. And every once in a while we do triple split week and we'd go to like home of Louisiana and, you know, uh, very interesting places that were, mm -hmm. I had no idea existed. And me being from like the Haight-Ashbury in San Francisco, where I'm like, I'm like, everyone is love. Uh -huh. <laughs> raised by hippies, raised by drag queens, you know, raised by the rainbow scope of the, you know, of humankind. <laughs> Never had I really ever encountered Detroit, downtown. I didn't know any better. I was young. I walked around like nothing. Like in the nineties, I had no idea. It's yeah, in nineties, no idea. Baltimore and like yeah, where you're downtown, it's 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 very not safe. Toledo, Ohio. Like I remember walking. <laughs> I remember being like Schenectady, New York, and like being like, I'm hungry. I'm going to walk from my motel <laughs> down the highway to whatever like Jack in the Box is like a mile <laughs> down the road. <laughs> like, I didn't have a cell phone. I had, you know, it was so different back then. 
so, so different back then. It like, must have been such a relief to get to Broadway and you just stay in one place for a while. And there's a McDonald's right down the street. Well, yeah, I mean, I lived right behind Lincoln Center, behind the the um, housing, the, uh -huh. the housing project right there. So I would always walk through there every day. And um, people were like, are you, are you worried about that? I was like, actually, no, I don't really care. <laughs> like, who's gonna bother me? I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Like, hey guys, how you doing? Like, I'm friendly. <laughs> I'm friendly, like, I don't know. And it never bothered me. And I moved up to Washington Heights like before it became like cleaned up or whatever. Yeah. Like I I bought up there because friends of mine were, were like, you can get really like good prices on property. Oh. And I bought like the house that Katz built was like I bought a two bedroom up, up there. And the only thing around were a bunch of laundromats and, um, a weird animal, like a, a weird, what was it? Like a shop, like a, um, sorry, like a pet store with oh. like one turtle in the window, in the window. And while I was there, it got a Starbucks. It got this amazing steakhouse. It like turned into like the place to be. Yeah. Um, and I was there for eight years. I saw the whole thing change and I saw like the A train, like, Man, the void on the A train from 59th to 125th Street, that's rough sometimes. If you, you can get some weird people on that train, then it's like the doors are locked. You can't move. It's, yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine wrote an entire musical based on the void between 59th and 125th Street. It's kind of amazing. Um, well, I was going to say, what I love about your career is you started in Cats on Broadway, and then you did the most wonderful offbeat shows for the next decade that no not enough people talk about like rooms i saw at new world stages I love that where you show. understudied kritzer yeah yeah and you were placed in the toxic Aveng avenger which is one of the funniest off-broadway musicals i've ever seen that was so much fun <laughs> were you did you get to work with nancy opal was she still oh, there when yeah. You oh yeah oh yeah i got i got the whole original cast um they are, were all beyond talented people, like beyond talented. And then, so when I came in and then um, some more people came in, but Nancy Opal is a genius and, you know, Nick Cordero is just so amazing and, uh, yes. and it was so much fun. And I was just this interim like replacement. I was only there for two months because then they got Diana DeGarmo. Like they did me dirty like that. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a name. I love Diana DeGarmo, but like I was pissed. You know, um, but you know, I wasn't, I, I wasn't anyone other than like legally blonde, the search for all woods. No one's going to come and see me do anything. So now they um, will. Now that is a calling card. <laughs> oh, you a blow show. It's become infamous. And I love that. I love seeing every once in a while, someone on Twitter will be like, oh my God, Lena Hall is Selena. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god like it's such a revelation to them they're like oh my god <laughs> and yeah i mean a lot's changed but i'm still the same person and i'm glad i did it it was fun it was really tough and humiliating at the time but like i'm glad i did it <laughs> well, I mean, now that's going to be something that you can point to that'll be a conversation starter for the rest of your life right yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I'm fine with that. <laughs> yes. Well, I, mean, cats. I mean, I love cats so much and I loved doing cats. I, I like, I, I loved that show. I have such a special place in my heart for that show. And did you I watch the, did you, you watch the YouTube? Show. What? Did you watch the YouTube with Andrew Lloyd, the Andrew Lloyd Webber hosted YouTube where uh, they streamed over the weekend, the 98 filmed version with Elaine Page. No, but I was oh. doing it then. Yeah, but... It was so cool. I thought it was so that was so cool. I, I I have that. I have that VHS tape somewhere. Next to sidekicks and ladybug. Correct. And um Goonies and what's the other one? Oh, Return to Oz. Feruza Bach, Terrified oh, Generation of Children. Amazing. The head the head closet? It's so good. It's so good. That. Return to Oz musical needs to happen. I need to play mom, uh, um, uh, 
Uh, the queen, uh, what's her name? Uh, Mumbai, uh, the, the, the witch queen with the heads. I'll never think of it, but yes, you should. Also, not enough people talk about the fact that that movie opens with Dorothy undergoing electroshock therapy. Because of Oz, yeah. Isn't that crazy? Because they think she's insane because she met a tin man and a scarecrow and killed a witch. Yeah. And her talking chicken, Belina. Oh my God, Belina. And then the the weird, like, skatey guys. Uh-huh. Legs, and that's just cool. And they you know don't what? look like that anymore because, it, you know... <sighs> Everybody gets offended or everyone has, you know, it's like, oh, my kid. Oh, you can't make that for kid. You know, it's like, I don't know. We we turned out okay. <laughs> and that was our kid yeah. movies. Labyrinth. Yeah, and look, look, look at the two of us. The Dark Crystal. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like the things that we watched are so insane to me, but also, so a friend of mine has a six, has a, a three-year-old and her first movie was the Charlotte's Web cartoon. <gasps> and the next day she was eating a berry and she was eating it like this. And my friend said, what are you eating? And she quoted Charlotte and she said, I'm pretending it's a bug and I'm sucking out its blood. And I was like, oh God, we're, we're really crushing it raising this kid. I'm so proud of us. Yeah. No, get the original My Little Pony. That's dark. Oh, the original like like Gem and the Holograms. I was it's dark. Just about to say Gem. It was dark. Loved it. Wait, we have to talk about Hedwig because you won the Tony Award. I did. No big deal. It's not one of your many bookshelves oh, yeah. in your in your new no, home. No, no, no. You know, uh, the first thing that my husband grabbed when he was coming up here to to quarantine. Was my Tony Award? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I brought this for you. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> but I want to know what it was like because you're the famously you're the first person who played uh, both roles in the same production when you toured the country. Mm. So was it when you would switch over to Hedwig? Was that something you would look forward to during the week, or was it like, oh shit, now I have to get into a completely different headspace for one performance? Um, doing that role is weird because, uh, you literally leave your body. <laughs> you do. <laughs> literally, once you step on that stage, you are no longer in your body anymore. I mean, it just takes you over and you just, you forget the whole thing at the end of the show. You're like, I think I just did something. <laughs> because I'm really fucking tired. I look crazy because I have litter shit all over my, my hair is wet. I'm like. I feel like I was hit by a truck. Something just happened. Um, but uh, but honestly, like uh, when they came to me, they were like, "We we would like for you to open the tour with Darren." And I was like, "Well, I love Darren, but like I can't just do this role again, like because I went out with such a bang. How do you top that? And also, like, kind of when you leave something, you put it to bed, and so to revisit is like opening old wounds. It's almost like getting into yeah. a relationship that is very um like a like an abusive relationship um because that role was so uh painful it really just like it hurt my body a lot um by the end of the broadway run i i was wearing you know those um you know those, like um what are they when you have um wrist um carpal tunnel you oh, know those carpal tunnel claws <laughs> i wore Two of those <laughs> every show because I couldn't, I couldn't, it was so painful. I ripped all of these things in my wrist Ooh. and my, I was so, I was destroyed. My posture was destroyed. My body was destroyed. I had back problems, hip problems. And, uh, and I mean, it was worth it because it was like so fun and incredible to like dive that deep into a character. Um, but for the tour, I was like, y'all gotta, I can't just do, do Yitzhak. Like I put him to bed, like, you know, what are we gonna do? And they were like, well, because of the nature of the show, we have to do eight shows a week and Darren is only going to do seven. So we thought you could do the eighth as Hedwig. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> we like, but you know, we'll give you one show off a week. And I was like, no, 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 I got this. It ain't that hard. 
Oh my God. It was the stupidest thing. So basically every time before I was going to go on for headway, I was like, the fuck is my problem? Why did I say I would do eight shows a week? Like I could have had a free show off every single week. And no, I wanted to do it the way my weird head was like, you're superhero. You can do it. You're fine. And it was like, I also want to one up this and also only do headwig on a two show day. So I only did headwig on a two show day. First show I was Yitzhak, second show I was headwig. And that's because in my mind, I thought in the first show, I'd be able to get kind of a refresher of the show so that I remembered everything when I came to play headwig and it is the dumbest thing I've ever done. <laughs> you know what? I did it. I, did I, it. Blame, I blame Return to Oz for screwing <laughs> you up so badly as a child that you thought that was a good idea. I mean, I really like, that's what I did. And that was all my suggestion, of course. And I do this to myself often. And, but you know, like it was like record when I recorded the Obsessed series. Yeah. I 54 songs. We did 54 videos in eight days, eight days. I did each song four times. Um, and, uh, and, and we, we finished it all in eight days. Basically I did a song an hour and, um, uh, I, I suggested that yeah. I thought, Oh yeah, I can do this easy. No problem. And what's crazy is there was only one day where I was like, I was like, uh, I'm feeling tired. <laughs> and this was when we were doing pink. We decided to do pink like first thing in the morning and about an hour in, then I got my rhythm and I was like, Oh, I'm fine now. And then I was fine for the rest of the, the thing. So I, I mean, how many songs is that? You know, eight times 54 time. Wait, no. So 54 songs times four, basically, because I would do each one four times. And like, so I like to do these things where I completely overblow my my actual physical mental ability, and then I am forced to do it. And but I do it. Work out. And I do it. And, and you I do, do it. it. I will say though, doing headway, I did. I did fuck up my hip really bad, um, but I'm better now, so I'm ready to do it again. <laughs> but this time, I want to do it. A different way so i'd like to put on my own production of hedwig and I'd, I'd like to play hedwig i'd like a man to play Yitzhak, and uh and um i'd like to do it down and dirty again uh and i was working on this before the pandemic happened so it's not gonna happen for a while obviously but um but uh but yeah i was working on i mean you've got the space we're we, we are all producers now yeah in a world, there's a virtual way to do it. So, um, so yeah, been trying to think, thinking on it, figuring things out. I love that. Yeah. Um, we are out of time. No. Oh, oh damn. You know, I can talk forever. <laughs> uh, so can I, don't worry. But uh, it's almost five o'clock, which means that I'm one minute away from my uh, evening cocktail. <gasps> oh, how wonderful. Which is always the priority. Uh, <laughs> So if people want to follow you on social media, they can do so at Lena Rocker Hall. <laughs> and no I, I made it up before anything. Lena Rocker Hall. At Lena Rocker Hall. You can find me on YouTube. You can find the Obsessed series, Lena Hall Obsessed, on YouTube. It's also on Spotify. Snowpiercers on TNT um, in the States and also airing on Netflix worldwide starting May 25th. And guess what? May 25th. You get two episodes on Netflix, and then they're going to air in tandem around the world. That's so cool. I know. Uh, yeah. I know. Uh, Sundays on TNT in America, guys. Watch Snowpiercer. Yeah. Get into it. It's it's going to be a, a thousand and one tales. It's one thousand and one cars long. And honey, it's 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 awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining Stream Stealers today. You are a delight. Well, thank you for having me. Always, anytime. It's my pleasure. Anytime that you want to come back, just give me a holler. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. And I will see you guys on Wednesday at 4.30 when Tom Pelfrey from Netflix's Ozark will be joining us. Oh, shut up.
Damn yeah. it. Hi. I will. Tune in. Say hello to yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everyone. Until next time. <laughs>